friends, we have a hot tub that is tripping the breaker. <clears throat> That's all the way off, all the way on, and you can see that it still looks like it's on, but you heard it trip. So see if I touch it, it goes back to the middle. Off, on. There you go. So we're going to diagnose this tub. I'll show you. All right, so this has a, I'm draining the water. What I'm doing is unhooking the heater from the board to isolate it. And we'll see if the breaker sets now. Be willing to bet you that it does. So what I did was just unhook the, the wires. So what I did was just simply unhook the wires from the board. I'm loose like that right there. So they're, they're off of the board. Now we're going to go see if the breaker sets. Breaker off, back on. So now you can see that it does set. So it is a bad heater. We're going to change it out. Stay tuned. All right, friends, so we're going to change this heater out. Now, I tilted the tub back, and the reason I did that was I'm in a place where I really don't need to spill any water, and this tub does not have any service slice valves. So <clears throat> I'm going to go ahead and turn these loose, and hopefully I don't get any water. If I do, it won't be much. Real lucky, I won't, won't get any. I'm using oil filter pliers to loosen these nuts. So I'm gonna do that first. ahead and remove these screws, loosen the pack up. Now I'm going to loosen these screws, which are the, or loosen these bolts I should say, on the heater. And these have a light right here. That's what the extra set of wires are. So it's a heat indicator. It tells you when the, the heater is actually on. So that is one. That is the left one. I'm gonna do the same thing on the right. And what I'm using is a quarter inch to hold the bottom and then three eighths on the nut. Some of these are three eighths on the bottom and on the top. So just pay attention and definitely when you're putting the new one on, you want to hold the, the thing, but that's the light. You can see those two wires for the light. Now I'm going to loosen, take the wires loose on the pressure switch. One here, one here. And I'm going to set this over to the side. And I'm going to loosen these nuts right here that hold the heater tube into the, the body of the pack. This is a Gecko board in a Hydroquip pack. And basically what Hydroquip does is buys boards from Gecko and Balboa and builds their own packs with them. So that's what this is. And there's a hole big enough Right there, you can see the pressure switch will actually go through the hole, which is nice. You don't have to pull the pressure switch out. This thing is really difficult all the way. Usually, you can get this loose enough to run it off with your fingers. Always going to be one problem, child, somewhere. 
There it is. And usually there'll be a high limit on the heater somewhere pinched on. And this particular one, I'll show you the high limit is right here, pinched inside this. And you see this thing is pretty rusty. This heater is, so we're gonna clean it up nice. Change the heater element. And a telltale sign that the heater element itself is bad is that right there. You see that rust and that discoloration? That is a sign. So there's your high limit. So there is the heater element itself is in this tube. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to let you see down the tube. And you can see that the, whoever put that element in the last time let it touch the side, and that is a no-no. You have to hold your finger in there because what it does is it overheats the tube and it cuts down on the heating efficiency. It actually makes it, it'll discolor the tube like it did right there. So to change this, get a, a three quarter inch or a 19 millimeter and just turn the nuts off. You can usually just loosen them and then run them off with your fingers. Some have these washers. My replacement element does not have the washer. Take it, just knock it in like that. And reach in and grab it and pull it out. And sometimes you may need to take what I use as a flat screwdriver or a pair of needle nose and push the electrodes in like that. And you can see, voila, the heater is out. Like that. And this heater is pretty damaged looking but where it was leaking through is it leaks through the epoxy right here and it actually leaks through to the front so you can see that it's rusty right there. That is a bad heater element. Now I'm going to turn the camera off, go clean this uh, tube up and get it ready and then we will, I'll show you how to install it. Stay tuned friends. So what I use to clean this up is a wire brush you can see like this and you just basically just brush it real good. Another thing that you can use is some light sandpaper something like that, and it'll knock that rust off. And getting the, all the rust off is not that big of a deal, but I, I like to clean them up, make them look nice. And you can see from the front, it looks, looks real nice. Main thing is cleaning these surfaces up right here, getting that nice and clean. And you can see inside the tube. So now what we're going to do is I'm going to go ahead and put the, uh, the new heater element in. And I only use titanium now. I don't use the Inkaloy or any of the other heaters. This is just, this is a little bit of insurance, if you will, when you do this. And this is a titanium element. You see there's a little o-ring under each one of these nuts. Now one thing that I do is we offer a kit that comes with some clear silicone and what I like to do is I don't put a whole lot on it but you need a little bit of silicone around the around the threads because what will happen is if you don't seal it up that water can walk the threads and as you saw it can it doesn't necessarily break the the seal on the back where the thing is pinched together, it can actually walk the threads and trip the breaker as well. So if you seal it up, it does a couple of things. It keeps the nuts from backing off from vibration. <clears throat> and it also ensures a good seal. <clears throat> so just stick the element in. And sometimes they're a little harder to get in than other times. Depends on the element really or the tube, I mean. So a lot of times I'll turn it sideways like this, flip it in and then twist it up. And you can see that it's in there. There we go. 
So I just twisted it around, pull it through. And I've probably installed a couple of thousand heater elements over the years. There are quite a few. And they can all be slightly different. Now another thing that I do is you'll see that I'm holding my finger in where the element is and what I'm doing is holding it off the wall. I'm going to center it up in the bore when, I, uh, when it gets tight. But if you don't, as you saw before, you have an issue with it touching the edge of the heater tube and that cuts down on the efficiency of the heater. And what you do tightening wise is you just I snug it, snug it. And another thing that you can do is it's going to put pressure on your finger as you do that. So I snug both of them. And then I'll go to this one and back off just ever so slightly. And that will center the heater element up. You don't loosen it. You just back off of it. And you can see it's dead in the center of the tube. That's the way it's supposed to be. So now I'm going to put my high limit back in. Tighten the wing nut back up. And I pulled my pressure switch off because whoever had installed it before, I didn't like the way the, um, the pipe tape looked. So I'm going to pipe tape this thing. And the way you do it is I hold my pressure switch in the right hand. I put the tape in my left hand and you twist it around like you're screwing it in. You get it to double over, and then you just hold it and you turn it, turn it clockwise, just like that. And if you do that, the tape is in the right direction. If you go the other way, when you screw it in, it actually unscrews the tape. So you can see, I'm gonna, gonna stick it in there. And they didn't have it far enough down in the bore, in my opinion, into the, into the thread, so I'm gonna screw it on down in there. That looks real good right there. So now we're going to put this bad boy back in. fingers and then once it's in snug it with your wrench And there's no polarity to the pressure switch. It's just a normally open switch. So it doesn't matter which side you put the, the uh, leads on. It does not matter. I'll slip my high limit back in. Always got to be some problem, child. Some little something that's not going to work quite right. Alright, 
So I got my high limit plug back in. Now I'm going to take these two leads. One on the left and one on the right. I'll stick my light leads on top and then put the nuts on the top of the element. Run it up with my fingers as tight as I can get it. Saves time in the long run. Always put a quarter inch wrench under on my elements. Because if you don't, when you're tightening it like this, you can twist the Electrode off, nice and snug. All right, that is installed. Now I'm going to put the screws back in the board. See, I backed off of my of my drill, put it on about four or five. Now I'm gonna bump it up just a little bit to about ten. Ratchet it. All right. So now we're gonna hook our leads back up and and we have gaskets these o-rings feel pretty good on this thing um, but while I've got it off this side has a, a new gasket on it I'm gonna go ahead and put a gasket on this right side just to be safe we offer gaskets in our store and almost all of them are gonna be that standard black gasket that I just showed you but there's exceptions so make sure you, you measure All right, so you see I took an O-ring out, I'm gonna put a gasket in. And the gasket has a, our gaskets have a lip that fits up where the O-ring was, plus it gives you some more thickness, so it's just a little better seal in my opinion. All right, I'm gonna snug it with my oil filter pliers. You notice I hold the plumbing when I snug it because it puts a big twist on it. And I try not to put too much pressure on it, twist it around, so I want to hold it in place. And there you are, friends. I'm going to put it back down. We're going to um, fill her up. And I'll let you see her heat. Stay tuned. All right, let's see if the breaker sets now. Completely off, all the way back on. And you can see that it did set. And you heard the pump come on the tub. All right, so you can see that it is drawing 14 amps because it's a 4KW. 4KW heater. And the heat light is on in the front of the box. So the heater is actually working. 
the only true test is an amperage test. You could also test here. You could verify that you have voltage across it. You can see that I'm 203, which I'm in industrial. Uh, I'm not at a home. I'm in industrial voltage, which is a little bit less. But you can see it's showing 203. That does not mean that the heater is actually heating. The true test is, is it drawing current? Because you could theoretically have voltage here, but the heater be open and you're not drawing current. So there you go, friends. Another heater installed and working, no breaker trip. So we've got another hot tub working, friends, new heater. If you need heater, pressure switch, whatever, click this banner, go to my website. This banner is going to take you straight to heaters uh, like this, the uh, through style elements. But if you need other stuff, just stick it in the uh, search box. Put in pressure switch, whatever you may need. Click today. I am the spy guy.